Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Teaching with Madly Learning. Tonight, I want to talk about going digital. For many of us, we were thrust in March into a situation where we were scrambling and we had to all of a sudden change from in-person to online teaching overnight, or at least it seemed like it was overnight. However, going back into September, it's looking at this point like most Canadian teachers are going back to in-class full-time learning. And that means that we're probably going to be using a hybrid of both in-class strategies as well as using some of our digital. In last week's episode, we talked about how we could use the things that we learned as digital teachers to bring those into the classroom. However, in tonight's video, we specifically want to look at going digital and how we can keep it simple. I'm going to give you five criteria that you should be asking yourself before you go ahead and convert all the things to digital. Not everything is ideal as a digital digital activity and we really need to slow ourselves down and take a step back and really evaluate whether or not we actually need to create that elaborate Google slide for every single worksheet we've ever owned or ever plan on using. So if you are new to the show, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Patty and I am a junior grade teacher here in Ontario, Canada. And I have a new video that comes out every Monday night that helps teachers of the junior grades look at how to use inquiry-based learning, differentiated instruction, teaching split grades, and all subject areas in the junior grades. And it is my hope that through these videos, we can help to make teaching and learning more easy, simple, fun, and effective for both you and your students. So again, we're talking about digital and keeping things simple. And I have five criteria or five questions that I want you to ask yourself before you go ahead and try to make absolutely everything digital. I firmly believe as a teacher who's been using both in-class and digital tools for the last couple of years in my classroom, that it is not beneficial to turn everything into a digital project. In fact, it's going to triple or quadruple your workload for not a lot of return. So here are the five questions. The first one is, can the activity be done on paper? At this point, I'm not hearing anyone tell us that we can't use paper other than some hypothetical and conjecture that might be happening online. Yes, using paper might look a lot different than it has in the past, but I think the reality is is that we won't have one-to-one tech for our students, so we will be using some form of paper notebook or photocopied material. So because of that, we really need to evaluate whether turning it into digital is actually worth our time in making it digital. Because most of us don't get it provided for us in digital or we're making it and we need to print it out for some students. Sometimes the easiest solution is the best. So if you have an activity such as write me a recount or finish this reading response, or complete these textbook questions in your notebook. There is not a lot of reason why we would need to convert those type of activities into digital activities when we're teaching students in our classrooms. Also, if we happen to be in a digital school where we're teaching those that have opted out of in-class learning, we really should be evaluating whether or not we need to create a framework or a page that students write on or whether students can create that page themselves. So if we have assigned the activity of write a recount, do we need to create a page on Google Slides that students work through or can we simply require students to type docs.new into their browser which will open up a brand new Google Docs for our students to write in? just the same as if they were in class, they would open up a notebook, we can make our students do some of the work themselves so that we are not making and planning every single page that they need to write on. It is not necessary for us to create a worksheet for absolutely everything that our students do. Just like you would use a notebook, you can still use Google Suites to allow students to create their own activity, create their own document for them to share their knowledge. The question when it comes to digital when it and can it be done on paper is ask yourself, what kind of paper would I be using if I were in the classroom? If you can answer it with, I would use a notebook or I would hand out a blank piece of paper, then you don't need to create anything for your students for that activities. 
teach them how to create those activities themselves by opening up a new doc or slide and creating it from scratch. The second question I wanna ask, or I wanna get you to ask, is is it transformative? Now we want our use of digital to improve the activity. So if we look, we have a traditional worksheet type of activity and we want to convert it to digital because we really like it. We really need to ask ourselves whether or not we're actually transforming that activity or they're doing the same type of learning on the worksheet or on paper. We want our use of digital because it will be more complicated for us, number one, to recreate, and number two, for students to use, that we really need to decide whether the use of a Google tool or the use of a digital tool is going to be transformative and make that activity that much better. Thinking about are you improving the activity by making it digital, and not just fun, but are you actually making more functional, more engaging activities. Now I know a lot of us have ourselves convinced that everything digital automatically means it's more engaging, but we really need to push ourselves to stop thinking this way. Just because the activity is on digital does not actually mean it's more engaging. So if it's the same activity, I would encourage you to not convert those to digital products, but to make it transformative, to change or transform the activity and make it better, add more functionality to it and make it more interactive. Those are going to be activities that are beneficial as a digital form because sometimes on digital we can do things that are not possible on paper. Simply providing students and cre recreating a worksheet for students to use is not transformative enough. Now, if you are happening to be teaching in a digital classroom, this doesn't mean, again, that if you've got a worksheet on your computer, on Microsoft Word, or you've got a PDF version of a worksheet, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be recreating that worksheet on Google Slides. There are tools available that will allow your students to fill out a worksheet in the same way they would with a pencil when you photocopy and print out that piece of paper. Using tools such as GoodNotes on a tablet or Kami on a computer will allow your students to simply type in their answers right on top of a worksheet without the hassle or the stress of you needing to remake and recreate everything in the format that you currently have it in. The third question I want you to ask yourself is, does this absolutely need to be digital? Or can I change and alter and modify the activity to in another way? in another way that is simpler and requires less resources and less time for you to create it. We need to remember that when it comes to digital, a lot of us don't have a wide variety of digital tools and digital activities, or we don't wanna spend a fortune on upgrading to all of the digital activities that are out there and available. So because of that, because of this, we need to not rely solely on digital activities that we can use different forms and different ways to engage our students, whether we are teaching in class or teaching online, that do not require us to constantly have to create something for our students to interact with. We can allow some of that creation to be in the hands of our students. Using things such as Flipgrid will allow you to have your students record their video, record their thinking and thoughts, and you won't necessarily need to create a answer page or a framework for them to complete, but they themselves can create it. You set up the question and they can then answer it without you needing to create different student documents all of the time. My fourth question is, is it universal? Now the reality is, is that if we are in class, we are probably going to have students that need it in print and need it in digital. And even if we are teaching in a distance learning model, we will have students that want to print it and we will have students that simply want to complete it on their computer. 
When these are presented to us as options, we have to remember that parents are at home and they're helping their students if they're learning digitally. Some parents prefer to print the materials so that because they don't have access to the screens all day dedicated to that one child. So it's much easier for them to load up their work, print it out and hand it to their child so their child's not on the screen all day long. While other parents are totally fine and have a dedicated device for that child and it allows them to use the activities that are right on that device. So the question is, is the digital product that you're creating, is it printable? So if you are going to be using a PDF copy of a worksheet for a reading response or a reading response choice board, the question is, do you need to recreate that response choice board in a Google slide? No, I don't think you do. I think you can simply take that PDF and you can share that PDF paper with students on your Google Classroom so they can see it and it's the same exact page that is printed. There is no benefit to you as a teacher if you are the one that is needing to create two versions of every single thing you do. In fact, most options can be created once and used in multiple ways. Prior to me leaving in March and needing to go 100% digital, using digital tools in my classroom where I generally had about a third of my students who required all their information on technology, while the two thirds of my class required a hybrid, whether they could choose to use tech or they could choose to use paper, I very, very rarely designed two options for both students. Most of the time I provided a paper copy that was also doubled and saved as a PDF on their Google Classroom, or I simply printed the PDF and students knew to take photos of the PDF in the classroom to put it on their Google devices so that they would be able to use that picture that they took to reference when they were writing their responses or their math. So they would take a photo of a math textbook page or a math page and they would be able to annotate over top of that or they would be able to just simply answer the questions beside it. But students are adaptable and they're creative. And if you take a little bit of time to train them and show them the possibilities that they themselves can take control over some of that learning and they can assist you in doing some of the heavy lifting so that you're not doing all of it, it will be beneficial not only for you, but for the students. It will teach them, number one, how to advocate for themselves, and number two, it will reduce your workload so that you are not having to recreate absolutely everything that you make for both your classroom and your digital students. And finally, my last question that I want you to ask yourself when you are considering doing something digital is your return on investment. Now this is a business term that often is used to talk about the amount of efforts you put in should have greater returns. So if you spend an hour making an activity, the benefit for your students should be multiplied. So it should increase the value to, of that activity to your students. Otherwise, why are you spending the time creating that activity? If you can get the same value out of it with your students by using what you already have, then use it. Don't recreate the wheel or make something new and fancy simply because you feel as though you should. The easiest solution is often the best solution. So if you have a PDF version that you've used for years that you want to also use to share digitally with your students, to open that PDF, select print, print to PDF, just that one single page that you wanna use and you create a new PDF document of this new resource where it's just the one page you need and then you can go ahead and share that activity with your students where they just see the one page. Now that step has taken you five minutes, whereas recreating the entire document in a completely different format and platform will take you an hour to an hour and a half. If 
the students still get the same benefit from both ways, then that's okay. We don't have to simply line the pathway to learning for our students with and baby proof and safety proof absolutely everything and make their pathway with and kind of be helicopter teachers. We can allow our students to figure it out. We can allow our students to work through this process and we can allow them to struggle just a little bit. With our support, they will overcome those struggles and they will figure it out. And by allowing them to join us on the journey of figuring it out so that we don't have to have everything figured out now, it means that our students can be more successful and our workload isn't so overwhelming and debilitating. When you're asking whether or not your activity has a good return on investment, you should ask, does this activity build actual engagement as measured in the way they work? Will they work longer on that same activity? And will they work with more focus? Not do they like it better? Engagement equals more time on task and more enthusiasm for the learning because they're able to focus on it for longer. How does your activity impact achievement? Do your students use this new digital form to learn something faster and quicker? Does it increase the rate at which they learn a concept or skill? Sometimes creating a video of myself teaching a concept live and then sharing that with students does allow them to learn that concept faster or quicker because they can revisit that video over and over again. For that investment of my time, because I'm doing it anyways, I just have to hit record on the lesson, it allows me to have a lesson that students can watch over and over again, which decreases my effort and time that I have to reteach that lesson myself one-to-one. The next question for is it transformative is, is it universally accessible to all students? So can students use it regardless of how they learn? Does it allow students who struggle with using technology? Does it allow students who need technology? Does it give students the option of not using technology or using technology? If it is universal and it can be used in a multitude of ways, then it's probably good and going to be a good return on your investment. Does this activity make you more productive? Using self-grading tests and Google Forms is a great way to create a digital activity that the benefit is going to be on your end when you don't have to market. A self-grading quiz or even using boom cards where you can monitor a student's activity on the on that platform will save you time in marking. So then your return on investment is definitely going to be increased because you might spend a little bit more time planning it, but you are not going to spend that time marking it. Now, all of this being said, sometimes we can tell ourselves that believing that just because it's digital automatically makes it better for our students. But the reality is that that simply isn't true. Making it digital does not necessarily make it more engaging or more fun. And it doesn't make it more useful and it doesn't make it more purposeful for our students either. We need to evaluate when we are going to be creating and assigning digital tools to make sure we're just simply not using the digital tools as a novelty, that there is a real purpose, there's transformative nature to it, it's universal in its approach, we're getting a great return on investment, and it is better digital than it is in paper. And because of that, we need to really look at when we use digital and maybe cut back on everything doesn't need to be digital. Thank you so much for joining me and we will see you next week. Bye for now.